God is real. Yes, he is. All I can feel is All right. in my soul. That's right. Hallelujah. And you can't see a soul. Man. But you ought to be able to feel one. Hallelujah. Man. 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 Thank you, Jesus. So again, we thank God that we're in the house of faith. Man. Thank God for another Sunday. Hmm? A dedicated and consecrated to God. Yes, he is. And a belief in his word. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. That's the yeah. same report here. Hmm? Evangelist Teresa, $10. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. Evangelist Amaya, $220. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. All right. Evangelist Shiloh, mm -hmm. $500. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. All right. Mm -hmm. You can't keep God giving no matter how you try. Yes, Jesus. Also, yeah. Uh, Baseball check. All right, look. Going to the same place. All right, another three report here. Amen. Daughter Sarah, five dollars. We give to the kingdom because the kingdom gives back to us Man. and not necessarily a material advantage, but in a spiritual value that surpasses any a material gain and God in his wisdom brothers and sisters he will bless us above measure yes. as long as we keep the faith principle now again this is a faith journey Man. I've told you many many times it's based on belief right. and belief is something that you cannot fool or trick <laughs> I was doing right. yeah. no such thing as a woman being almost pregnant if you got faith, you got faith. And it will not fool itself. The Bible comes to inspire us. I want to take my text from 8th chapter of Mark. And the thought I want to share again is the importance of the Bible coming to us to give us an insight on things yet to come based on things that have been in the past. If God healed way back then, he can heal today. Amen. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Now, in your receiving a blessing from God, it is important that you hold on to that blessing. The devil will come and snatch it right out of your hand if you let him. But again, because faith is the principle that guides us, we know that we are going to follow God and we are not going to allow the enemy to ever detract us right. or to cause us to fail in our relationship with God or his church. We have to stay in the church because the church is the vessel in which we gather uh, collectively to worship him, to praise him, to thank him, yes. and to share our testimony one with another. It's always good to share your testimony with someone else. And also, it's far more important to have your own testimony. Amen. Anytime God blesses, he blesses on an individual plane. Never does God bless in a collective manner except in certain conditions. When he blesses his church, he blesses the individual in the church because the individual in the church that makes up the church of God. So we have to understand the very importance of being blessed and keeping our blessing. Sometimes you've got to have another touch. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. Amen. That's why we come to church often. Right. Give you a little bit right. more strength. Right. Right. Uh, to, you might say, to increase our faith level in believing in the Word of God. The more you hear the Word of God taught, the stronger you're going to get in your faith principle. So again, it's so very important to understand, brothers and sisters, this is a journey based on the individual as we come together as a church family. Nevertheless, it's the individual that needs the blessing. Right. And any time that you want to be blessed of God, you've got to seek God for yourself. It's good to come to church, don't misunderstand me. But sometimes you've got to get down on your knees by yourself and let God minister to you. And when he ministers to you, sometimes he takes you away from the atmosphere of a crowd. Yes. 
right. because he wants to get something personally to you. And we all have a personal relationship. Right. And in order to have that personal relationship, brothers and sisters, sometimes it's necessary to be alone. I want to pick my text up from verse 22. I'm in Mark 8, chapter, verse 22. And he come to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of town. Now, uh, can I just uh, pause for a moment right there? Right. Sometime, I said before, you got to be alone with God. Now, he would, came to the city, but he took the man outside the city. He led him. Now, the man needed something from God, so obviously he followed him. Outside the city. God is at his best when he's all alone with you. And you're at your best when you're alone with God. Never allow for circumstances of this life to crowd out your relationship that you have with God. Sometimes it's good to watch the news. Sometimes it's good to turn that news on. Amen. My goodness, look at all the deaths that are rising from this virus. Right. More and more and more. And yet the people are still drawing farther away from God. Amen. Something's wrong with the people. Ain't nothing wrong with God, but something's wrong with the people. Amen. You need to get, I'm saying to the world, you two, listen close. You need to get your mind right. You need to get your mind stayed on Jesus and let's come together as a single church family that we can praise and worship God together. Yes. To write me and call me and tell me how uh, impressed you are, nevertheless, we got to come together. Yes. If no more than quarterly, twice a year, yes. we ought to come together because we are proving by our own individual testimony that we are one church, one belief, and one body in Christ Jesus. Yes. But in order for us to be separate, and some with the head cover, some don't with it, I believe in what you're teaching, but I just don't agree with the head cover. Listen, we've got to be in one accord. We've got to speak the same thing. Otherwise, there's a division amongst us, and God is not divided. Here, a blind man needed a miracle. The Bible said he came to God, and God led him out of the city. He took him away from the crowd, yes. even away from the church. Because he wanted to minister him individually. Yes. Read. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him. Hey, wait, 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 read that again. When he had spit on his eyes. Now wait, did God have to spit on his eyes? No. Nope. Why did he do it? Because he's trying to show an act of humility and an act of not trying to figure God out all the time. Yeah. Why do you spell that? I don't know, you don't either. <laughs> and I never will know, and neither will you. <laughs> but he's trying to show something that is uh, it's not about how you think things ought to be. You, the only proper way is God's way. Right. And the proper way of God's way is found in the Bible. Right. So you can't correct God, you can't correct Dick, you can't correct no head cover, you can't correct the, the wearing of jewels, you can't correct cost oh. dressing. Right. You can't correct, uh, uh, correct uh, the anatomy in which God gave male and female yes, right. and sir planted with something that's totally different right. and out the ordinary. Yes. And male to male sex is out the ordinary. Amen. Female to female sex is out the ordinary. Right. So in order for a male to marry another male, they got to be out the ordinary. Right. So we got to understand everything done decently and in order. But in order for God to get your attention, sometimes he's got to deal with you one on one. And he took the man outside the city, but he allowed something to be recorded. He spit in the man's eye. For you to stop and think, well, wait a minute, what's going on here? Work of God. Hand the work of God. And not for you to try to correct. Not for you to try to figure it out all the time. You can't figure out God uh, all the time. You can't figure out God no time. The only thing you can do is walk up by your corner and follow him according to the word of God. You got the man outside the city. He didn't want no crowd around him. Hallelujah. He didn't spit in his eye. Read. And put his hands upon him and asked him if he saw us. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. Now the man had to have his sight revealed. In other words, he was going through a terrible time in his life. Either you can accept this as a literal context of being blind, or being blind in your faith, in your walk with God. That's right. Now again, he did something extraordinary. It's not all, always done. 
He took my side of the city because he was getting ready to spit in the man's eye and heal him. And if he had done that, the moment he sitting in the crowd said, look at him spitting on the man. Yep. And they they left like the rest of the testimony. Yo, know, sometimes you gotta hear the rest of the story. Right. Oh, hallelujah. He spit the man down. Yeah, but they wanted to heal the man, didn't they? Oh, hallelujah. He asked the man, how do you see? It? What did the man say? Oh, he had to touch him again. Lord. At the first time he blinded, and that first time he touched him, he could see a little bit. But the man wasn't a total healing. When you get delivered from God, you get totally delivered and not half delivered. When you get the blessing of God, you get a blessing from God and not a half a blessing. When God comes to you and delivers you of your children again, when God says your body is healed, when God says you don't have no more fiction in your body, it's not half healed, it's not almost healed, it's healed all the way. But sometimes you got to touch your sin. How do you see this? I feel a like truth. I'll be saying touch him again. What do you say to him? After that, he put his hands on his yes. eyes, made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Now he saw clearly yes. after God touched him again. Yes. Church, there's people in this church right now, you need to be touched again. Yes. You can see a little bit, hallelujah. Yes. You believe some, but do you believe all of it? Yes. Are you willing to follow some of it? Are you willing to follow all of it? Yes. He had to touch that man again and when he touched the man again, he could see clearly. I'm trying to let you know somebody here today, you need to be touched again. Hallelujah. Yes. You can see clearly. I'm thinking about Abner. Abner's on the wrong side of the army that God had rose up to fight against uh, who was it? King Saul. Abner chose the wrong side. But there was something in his nature told him, uh, I'm in the wrong church here. I got to get right and get in the right church. When Abner saw his error, then he went to David and asked David for forgiveness for him being on the wrong side. I told you many times, David was a wise man. Yeah. He could have looked at him and said, no, no, you only joining me because you don't want to lose the side. You got enough sense to know you're on the losing side. Now you want to come in here with me. But David examined him. He said, all right. You say you're on the wrong side. Now you want to join hands with me. And there's something in your heart. I believe. Sometimes God can show someone something within but you've got to go to the right place in order to be blessed now david gave him the right hand of fellowship and everything was fine but a devil saw that and didn't want him to have his blessing anytime you get blessed from hear me anytime you get a blessing from god the devil's waiting there right to take that blessing away you got to learn how to stand up against the devil tell him no no in the name of jesus i don't care what kind of speed you got i don't care what kind of plan you have I'm I'm going to stay in the church. I'm not going to go to the other church but they got a different idea. they got a different thought concept. They don't do this, they don't do that. I'm going to stay in that church when they do this and do that. I'm going to stay in the church about me because I'm here by mine. I'm not going to follow those devils when God gives me a blessing. I'm going to hold on to that blessing. I'm going to fight for that blessing. I'm going to resist the devil. I will do I will not do that. The devil will take me or take my blessing away from me. Hallelujah. Devil came to Adam. And said, come on outside, I want to talk to you. I want to tell you about something. But you ain't got nothing to tell me. That's right. Hallelujah. I don't have to turn on no TV and hear a hypocrite preacher tell me something. All right. Because he can't tell me nothing. Amen. I don't need to get on no telephone and talk to my. Will you come and visit my church? They got something. Maybe you might want to hear it. No, your church ain't got nothing I want to hear. That's right. Maybe my church got something that you ought to hear. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. And took him outside the city. Y'all know the story. So uh, uh, Abner left his sword, but but uh, uh, who was it? Joab. Joab still had his. Sure did. And took him outside the gate because they couldn't kill him in the city. Because nope. then he'd been under the punishment of David. So he took him outside the city, and Abner didn't have enough common sense to know he couldn't go nowhere with someone who didn't like him. And he know, hey man, that he didn't like him because something had conspired with him and his sister. So he took him outside the city and there he killed him, graveyard dead. 
And David said, Abner died like a fool died. And he wept. He was broken hearted because he, he loved Abner. And he was broken hearted because he couldn't understand if I can deliver you and give you the right hand to fellowship from God. So he couldn't have done this. He got permission from God. And God had to speak to his soul and say, yeah, he's all right then. Go ahead and give him the right hand to fellowship. But when the enemy came to him and took him outside the city and then killed him, David had to let him in and say he died like a fool. His hands wasn't tied. His feet wasn't in shackles. Didn't nobody pull no gun on you and tell you to leave the church? Ain't yeah. nobody pull no gun on you and tell you to listen to that phone call? Ain't nobody tell you to listen to that relative, this loved one? Don't nobody love you but Jesus. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody gonna stand by you if you think you're saying Jesus. Hallelujah. You need God and you need God alone. And when you make up your mind, can't nobody else tell you but no you because this is no circumstance. You can do no wrong stuff to nobody to help you. Oh glory. Yes. That's why Jesus took the man, blind man, and let him outside the city. Yes. See, I want to perform a miracle, but I can't do it with all these people looking and wondering here. Amen. I gotta take you outside. So you the confusion is gone. Because if he'd been in the city, he said, touch him and say, How you see how well I can't see quite good. I see pretty good, but not he just said half blind. But the man didn't say, Would you halfway heal me? He said, Well, you hear me so I can see. And he was honest with Jesus. How do you see? Well, I see pretty fair, but I don't see like the Holy Spirit. I got my blessing, but I don't have all my blessing. Stay on your knees, keep calling on God, keep praying to God. If you don't see it, pray tomorrow. If you don't see it, pray next week. If you don't see it, pray next month. Pray next year. Just start to give me. Don't give you everything. Just keep everything positive. Just give your cautious decision. Hallelujah. Church, yes. you got to stay in the church. But when you're in the church, know that you got one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Pray to God and believe in God. Yes, we're a family. Let's stay in the family. But sometimes you got to get on your knees by yourself. Sometimes you got to get alone and sing a song. Hallelujah. Maybe clap your hands. Well, people might think I'm crazy. Well, maybe you are. Maybe you crazy for Jesus. Right. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. He part of the Red Sea. Will anybody believe that? They're crazy. Well, I believe it. Well, I'm, I'm so crazy. And I'm being I'm crazy. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor told me you hear. Pain shot through my body many a time. But I never went to the doctor. Thank Why? You. Somebody told me I was healed. Hallelujah. And you know what? I believe it. I believe you. He said it happened to him and it happened to him. God healed him. He can heal me too. What's wrong with me? I ain't done all that wrong. I did wrong because I was a sinner. But my goodness, hallelujah. The Bible says he's no respect of person. And if he took your sins and cast a seal of forgiveness to remember it no more forever, he'll do that. And if you need something from God, all you got to do is tell him. But when you tell him, wait. I believe the Bible says, wait on the Lord to be a what? Good courage. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I like that passage, be a good courage. Right. And I said, wait. Yes, wait. Do y'all understand the word wait? Mm -hmm. Till when? Till you get your deliverance. Right. Till you get your blessing. Right. Till you get your marriage. Right. And until then you see what? Waiting. Oh, and what? Be a good courage. Be happy. Right. I thank God. I'm happy this morning. I wait on the Lord, and He ain't never fail me. Come with me. Jesus knows just what I need. Just what I need. Oh yes, He knows. Oh yes, He knows just what I need. Just what I need.
proud of you lifting him up. Man. The true man of God with backbone and character. Man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my great God. Jesus Christ, all praise, honor, and glory. Yes. Again, Joe Bond, Joe's aforementioned prophet, Father H. Walker. Man. Let Lady Mother walk with love, memory, and legacy. Thank you, Jesus. Honor, honor, honor is due. Man. And I like how Papa brought that story. When he said, how do you see men? Mm. Because when you look at men, you I see him in the streets walking. In other words, he didn't receive all his blessings. That's deep. So, like Prophet said, we have not received all our blessings. What we're praying for, what we're asking for. So what we got to do? We got to press on in Jesus' name. And be happy about it. Wait on the Lord. And I believe in the book of Luke, it says, in patience, possess ye your soul. And when you're waiting, Prophet said, get happy. Because you can't wait and be sad. No, 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 no. You can't wait and be depressed, be discouraged, be downtrodden. No, you wait through the promise of God and you get happy by the promise of God. As brought forth by the man of God. So, I'm happy here. I'm not happy. I can't be church happy. I'm happy here. Thomas said the people rested on the word of Hezekiah. I'm going to rest on the word of Father Ed Walker. Right. So, get out of here. Father Hand again. Man. We want to have a great time in church tonight. Yes. I'm going to sit next door. Hallelujah. Church be encouraged. We win every time. Yes. Now we stand to be dismissed. Man. May the Lord watch. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee. Between me and thee. While I'm absent. While we absent. One from another. One from another. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God be with you. Hmm? God. Man.